Christ, welcome to worship at Pleasant Grove United Methodist Church. If you're joining us virtually, please greet one another in the comments. For those watching online, please continue to bear with us as we are making upgrades to our system. For those here in person, please keep your mask on, especially during singing, and remember to practice social distancing. Online opportunities this week, Monday at noon, we have a time of fellowship through Zoom. On Wednesday at 4, Ron and Rachel lead a time of music and devotion through the church Facebook page. Celebrate Recovery will not meet during the month of January. We're going to take this month off and relaunch in February. The Staff Parish Relations Committee will... Okay. Never mind. <laughs> Was, is Mary still having back problems or is she better? No, I, I think it Let me get the um, greatest and greatest. Sorry. That's all right. Oh, my bad. Uh, and just, uh, they're still, we're still collecting items for the Humane Society. Please check the bulletin sheet for more information about that. Please take note of the other announcements that are emailed each week and printed on the bulletin sheet. Please remember the several members of our congregation who are on quarantine because of COVID exposure. Uh, my sister Pam is feeling better, but mom feels a little worse. She still feels weak. So keep them both in your prayers uh, as we go through the week. Are there any others? I know uh, Sarah Warren had surgery. I understand she's doing well. Uh, anybody else? Good. So today, God's light of hope floods the earth and comes to us all. May we prepare our hearts to receive this light. Here, O oh people of God, the Lord alone is God. Let us remember this and recite it to the children. Let us bind it on our forehead, our hand, our home, and our heart. Let us love God with all our heart and soul and strength. Now we'll sing, To God Be the Glory, verses 1 and 3. <laughs>
just pray. Creator God, who has fearfully and wonderfully made each one of us, teach us how to love you with all of our heart, soul, and strength, so that we might faithfully serve you in all that we do. Amen. Now we'll sing uh, hymn 451, Be Thou My Vision, verses 1 and 2. I want to just jump in here and say something. Uh, I know Rachel's like, oh no! <laughs> but uh, I'm so glad that Thunder Road United Methodist Church had the vision to build this gym so that in case we couldn't worship the Lord, we could move to the gym for worship. I, I really think that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And thank you because likely many of you were the ones who had that vision. So thank you very much. Uh, 
and the local chapter of the Southern Leadership Conference had negotiated with the merchants downtown to remove the humiliating <laughs> racial signage. The merchants had promised to do this, so the demonstrations had stopped. But then the merchants broke their promise and did not remove the signs. That was the rationale for the direct action at that time. I begin with this quote from Dr. King because of that line in which he said, we would present our very bodies, presenting their bodies as a means of moving people's hearts and minds to understand the injustice of the situation. In those words, I hear an echo of another piece of writing by Paul. In Romans 12, 1, Paul writes, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Paul is telling us that our bodies matter to God. How we use our physical bodies matters to God. We can say we believe something with our minds and our hearts, but are we willing to back that up with the action of our bodies? In the passage which I read this morning from 1 Corinthians, Paul is writing about the importance of our bodies to God. As the passage from Romans, as in the passage from Romans, the implication of this passage is that our bodies matter in our relationship to God. The physical body should be used for leading a holy life, a life in which we glorify God. Our bodies matter to God because we have created them and called it good. And somehow when we don't use our bodies for God's purposes, we are disrespecting the creator of our physical bodies. Paul's arguing with those in Corinth who, who thought that your body just didn't matter when it came to religious things. He's disagreeing for, with them about thinking that you only have to assent to your religion with your mind. Or it's only about what happens to you after you leave your body. Among the early Christians in Corinth, there were those who were ready to throw away the Jewish law. The law had a lot of practices and rules about how we handle our own bodies. And in this passage, Paul was addressing those issues with believers who had that idea that since they had freedom in Christ, they could do whatever they wanted. They were particularly free from the Jewish law. They were free to indulge themselves with food and what other, other physical gratifications they wanted to indulge in. But Paul is refuting that. He's saying that the physical self is of concern to God, who created our bodies and meant them for good. What we do with our bodies matters to God. In verse 19, Paul says that our bodies are the temple of God. And when he says that, I think we have this generalized idea like it's a church. But to the audience he was talking to at that time, the temple was the temple in Jerusalem. It was the place where Jewish people understood God to live. In Roman and, and Greek gods, um, the religious culture with their gods, they had temples, but in those temples they had statues that represented God. In the temple in Jerusalem, in the Holy of Holies, there was the ark, which was made to be like a throne where God sat. It wasn't that God was contained, but God was there. God lived in that place. So if Paul is telling us that our bodies are the temple of God, he is telling us that our bodies are the place where God lives. God lives in our bodies. He's clear that it's not because we're holy that God comes to live in our bodies. Rather, it's because the Holy Spirit is in us that we should act in a holy way, that we are to strive for that holiness that honors God. It's not a works righteousness understanding that we'll be holy so then God will be with us. Rather, it's because we already have God's Spirit with us. We should recognize that and honor our bodies. Okay, now, this isn't in my sermon, but as I'm preaching this, I have to tell you, this is a hard scripture for me to preach on. Because I have, in the last year, baked cookies or brownies about every week. We have eaten a lot of comfort food, <laughs> and I have not done a good job. So this is as confessional of me uh, as anything. I'm preaching to myself here about taking care of our bodies. Because my understanding of this passage in the past has always been about the physical health of our bodies. 
I mean, what do we do with our bodies every day in our daily life? Sometimes we treat them like they're incidental, like just a carrying case for our soul, which really matters. Sometimes we don't recognize the, the gift that our body is from God. But as I contemplate on this passage again in this time, I think that I've struggled more to think about how we use our bodies to express our faith. We have a faith that is embodied in the physical person of Jesus Christ. So how do we embody our own faith every day? I mean, we can engage our spirits by praying. We can engage our minds in our faith by reading the Bible. But how do we engage our physical selves in the practice of our faith? Jesus didn't come just so we can go to some disembodied afterlife, but he came to give us life here and now abundantly. We can live an embodied life that calls us to live out our faith with our bodies. As Methodist Christians, we find this in our own church history. Our roots are in a movement that cared about the, the holistic approach to salvation. <coughs> When John Wesley was concerned for people's salvation, it included their physical selves, as well as the spiritual health to whom we minister. Living out our faith in our body calls us also to care for the physical bodies of other people, because they also are creatures created by God. When I think about this passage, in this way. I'm reminded of several things, but the first thing that comes to mind right now, because we've been in the hospital, are the healthcare workers who are there giving up their lives even. Do you know nearly 3,000 healthcare workers have died of COVID in the last year? They are putting their very bodies on the line to care for patients who are sick. There are so many other ways that we can offer our physical self for God. Near the conclusion of his letter in the, from the Birmingham jail, Dr. King wrote this, I have watched so many churches commit themselves to completely other world religion, which made a strange distinct distinction between body and soul, the sacred and the secular. Those who marched with Dr. King were willing to put their bodies on the line for their faith. What are we willing to do with our bodies for our faith? There's an expression, how much skin do you have in the game? Sometimes I wonder how much of our physical self, our skin, do we have in the game when we're living out our faith? Stepping out in faith, to actually live our faith in holy ways with our physical selves can be scary at times. But how can we do any less when Paul tells us that our bodies are the temple? Let us pray. O oh, great physician, holy God, you have created us for good, and we are the work of your hands. Remind us again of your great love for us. Give us the strength, the courage, and the desire to serve you more fully with all of who we are, our physical selves, as well as our spiritual selves. In the midst of our lives, which often feel timid and uncertain of how to be holy, might we know your steadying hand leading us to offer ourselves as living sacrifices. Gracious God, you know our hearts, and you know the places where we are unwell, the things that hold us back from living fully into who you have called us to be. Help us to lay those things before you so that whatever it is that burdens us, whatever worries and cares we have, we might know that reaching for you, all will be well when you speak the word. Healing God, we are grateful for those who have so willingly offered themselves for your service, who have risked their life and limb in the pursuit of justice. Precious God, we lift before you all those who are continuing to care for the sick, who are laying their lives before 
you as they serve others. And Lord, we are grateful for your healing power in our lives. We lift before you all those who are in need of that healing in body and mind and spirit. Might they especially know your touch, restoring them to wholeness. Lord, help us to open our hearts and lives to you, that we might truly love you with all of who we are. We ask these things in Christ's name, and pray as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I would remind those of you that are here that there are offering plates. I did not forget to bring those over um, by the doors. So you might leave your offering if you like. Those who are joining us virtually, you are always welcome to send your offering. I would invite you to two things this week. The first is, tomorrow we celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. Day. I read you just a few quotes from his letter from the Birmingham jail. Even if you have read that before, I invite you to go back and, and reread that letter. It can be found online. You can Google it. And, um, the version I read was actually a copy of the typewritten letter. Um, that letter was written to the bishop of the Methodist Church in, uh, it would have been the Methodist Church at that time, who was uh, housed in Birmingham Southern. And so there's a copy of that letter in our archives um, here at the conference because it was sent to our religious leaders. The other thing I would invite you to is to pray for our country. Um, we know that there will be the inauguration on Wednesday and that it is there's continued to be division in our country, as the last few weeks have shown. So I invite you to spend time. I, if I can get it organized, I will get online a sheet that you can sign up to be in prayer um, that day so that we can have like a prayer vigil so that there might not be any more violence in our country and we might find a way to um, gain unity in that. So I would invite you to um, pray for our country at that point. Let us sing together. Take my life and let it be. <laughs>